Mrs. Whipplethorpe needs this puppy chow delivered at once. Let nothing stand in your way. Be gone! Yes, sir. Traditionally, detecting objects both fixed and mobile has relied on LiDAR and camera technology which demand tons of processing power while draining batteries. These light-based methods also require high-level integration skills to ensure timely navigation decisions and avoid collisions. Well, Sonair is taking a different approach. They are developing ADAR, a 3D distance sensor technology for autonomous robots that offers omnidirectional depth sensing up to 5 meters. This system offers a 3D view of the robot's surroundings, overcoming the limitations and costs associated with common 2D LiDAR detection. But how does it work? I'll explain coming up, but first, let's check out our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Schneider Electric Lexium Cobots are designed to enhance efficiency and productivity by working safely alongside humans in fully integrated robotic systems. These cobots take on repetitive, physically demanding, and hazardous tasks and can be easily integrated into new or existing production lines across industries. They feature wireless connectivity, support for multiple platforms, accurate servo control, and easy setup with free programming software. Applications include automotive assembly, electronic soldering, machine tending, and more. They feature a wide range of models handling payloads from 3 to 18 kilograms. Help streamline your automation. Check out the Schneider Electric Lexium Cobots today at mauser.com. For our daily dose of education, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. There's this phenomenon that happens in coil-based devices that's called flyback. There's a few different terms for it. Freewheeling is another one, but the simple solution doesn't cost very much and it's really easy to install. And fortunately, the designers of automation equipment have understood that. Now, the, where, where this is gonna be important is in coil-based devices, like large contactors, sometimes large relay coils, large solenoids, and we wanna focus on those that are DC powered. So when DC voltage is applied to these coils, as an inductor, it builds up a magnetic field. That magnetic field is responsible for moving the solenoid or uh, activating the coil, switching the contacts in the relay or the contactor. And when the DC voltage charges that inductor, it's stable. As soon as the DC voltage is removed, that inductor wants to release that magnetic field through a path of low resistance. Now, if that path of low resistance happens to be the supply circuit, as the switch is opening, there will be a point where there's enough voltage generated to spark back across. Now that spark will then occur in the contact sets of a relay. And for these clear relays, if they're driving a large solenoid, you can actually see those in a control cabinet if the light is turned off. So how do we fix that? Well, we look at the device that's responsible for causing the spark in the first place. So we might look at that large coil or we might look at the coil of these relays. Now in this relay, even though it's small, we can still have that problem. Now I've removed the relay from its base, from its holder, and I can also remove this other piece from its holder. This is an add-on accessory. Not all relays will have this, but it's called a diode. And here we can see on the device is the print schematic symbol of an electrical diode. Now inside, these are what diodes really look like. They're very tiny devices and they're very inexpensive. So this is not a difficult or expensive solution by any means. But when we connect a diode in parallel but in reverse with the coil, instead of the coil, that electromagnetic coil, wanting to release the energy around the supply circuit, it simply releases its energy around this diode and the energy is released in a nice little circle that's made of the diode and the coil itself, harmlessly dissipating all of that energy instead of sending it back to the supply that it came from. So if you have a PLC that relies on relay outputs and those relay outputs are driving large solenoids or contactors, 
and you're continually experiencing those relays being disabled or faulting or being destroyed, you might want to consider adding diodes in parallel with each one of those coil devices, preventing that flyback or that freewheeling phenomenon that can damage relays. Sonair's 3D sensing technology is set to become a real game changer, but how does it work? The system emits ultrasound bursts and analyzes reflected signals from an array of receivers to provide a 3D view of the area. This innovation is enabled by MEMS transducers, which are piezoelectric and made of silicon for high compatibility with air. Unlike commercial transducers, these millimeter-sized MEMS devices can be spaced at half the wavelength of an ultrasonic pulse, enabling accurate image reconstruction using beamforming, a technique used in sonar, radar, and medical ultrasound. The combination of wavelength match transducers with advanced beamforming software and object recognition algorithms enables the system to generate 3D spatial information through sound alone. The sensor package is primarily aimed at industrial facilities like warehouses and logistics centers, but is versatile enough for potential use in service industries including healthcare, restaurants, and hotels. Speaking of service, I wonder if that dog ever got its chow. We love our furry friends here at The Edge. Hey, that does it for us. Be sure to click the links to our other videos and we'll see you next time.